This is Hannibal here with my post WrestleMania 40 edition of my Wrestling Observer newsletter review. There's a lot more in the Observer that I don't report on, I only report on the things I find interesting. Supposedly, Steve Austin was originally supposed to do the spot that The Undertaker ended up doing at WrestleMania, where The Undertaker chokeslammed The Rock. Originally, that was supposed to be Austin. However, they couldn't come to a financial agreement on how much they were going to pay Austin to do it. So he stayed at home with his cat. Roman Reigns said if he had lost the match with Cody, he'd be done with wrestling. They didn't push it very hard, so nobody is taking it seriously. Uh, He's not expected to be back until around the time of SummerSlam. Apparently, after Cody Rhodes went through the curtain in the main event, Paul Levesque and Nick Khan gave him a gold Rolex watch. I guess Dusty Rhodes had wasted all of his money in around 2003 or 2004 when he was broke. He had pawned his Rolex watch. So that was the significance of that. There's no planned date for The Rock to return for a match, but uh, it's being talked about for next year's Mania or possibly one of the Saudi Arabia shows where they pay a huge amount of money. Uh, it's Although we were, there was initial talk that he was going to work with Roman Reigns, uh, there's a lot of heat between him and Cody now. If... It's not going to be uh, until next year's WrestleMania when The Rock faces Cody. Expect Cody to keep the title until then. Honestly, other than Roman Reigns, there's no legitimate challengers for that title anyways. Viewership for WrestleMania on Peacock was up 40 per, 41% from last year. Uh, however, there's 48% more subscribers to Peacock as well. And, and obviously, it was, this was, there's a lot of interest in this WrestleMania, but more people watched it than ever. That had a lot to do with um, they're not having to buy the pay-per-view anymore, and Peacock is pretty cheap to, to have. So it's a lot cheaper to watch WWE if you have Peacock. Like, if Netflix is supposed to carry the pay-per-views here in Canada next year, I will subscribe to Netflix and probably watch some of the pay-per-views uh, because that's not a bad deal if you get the Netflix content as well. WWE announced 72,543 for night one of WrestleMania, 72,755 for night two. Wrestle tickets announced 69,652 night one or for both days of the shows I guess Um, apparently as for Brock Lesnar he will be back eventually he doesn't have that much heat on him stemming from the Janelle Grant lawsuit and from my understanding uh, he never did anything with her anyways other than ask her for a picture to pee when they had been in contact which which the whole thing is just bizarre and i i'm sick of thinking about it and talking about that that lawsuit let it i hope it goes to court and i hope it plays out in court by the way the ufc's all-time gate record for for money they made 17.7 million november 12 2016 Madison Square Garden, Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez. Julia, the Japanese woman's star, appeared at NXT. She apparently agreed to a deal with WWE late last year. Damian Priest re-signed a multi-year deal recently. John Cena says he'll be back doing matches, hopefully, around the end of the year. He said he wants to retire by 50, which would be 2027. But when do wrestlers ever actually keep their retirement promises? 
it's all about the money. If you're offered more than an offer you can't refuse, you don't really retire. The only time wrestlers really keep their retirement promises if, is if there's an injury involved. Otherwise, there's not many I can think of that have actually stayed retired. I'll be shocked if The Undertaker stays retired, to be honest with you. Um, after having success doing it recently with bigger shows, WWE is going to start going with the smaller sets in arenas where there's high ticket demand. In Philadelphia last week, they were able to put another 5,000 people by having smaller stages for Raw and SmackDown. And honestly, it looked it looks way better with like the tunnel and, and fans on either side and showing a packed house than the ugly Titan Tron that was cool in the 90s, but we're 2024 now, halfway through. Um, Jacob Fatu has signed with WWE. SmackDown in Detroit sold out 13,296, although if they do a smaller set, they could probably fit more. Montreal will break the raw sellout streak in all likelihood next Monday. Only 10,608 tickets out, which is surprising because it's usually a strong city for wrestling. But uh, I think one of the reasons why they put the IC title on Sami Zayn is to try and help get a bigger crowd for that one. April 5th, the SmackDown Hall of Fame WrestleMania Philadelphia edition had 18,150. Uh, the Raw in Philadelphia actually had a little bit more, 18,436. So they called both a sellout, but they were able to fit more for the Ross in the same arena. Strange. Uh, for AEW, it was the most talked about edition of Dynamite and the largest rating they've had in a long time, airing the, the CM Punk footage with Jack Perry. It got them a 0 0.30 rating where they had been doing about a 0 0.23. It was Tony Khan's decision to air the footage. He was heavily criticized for the idea as it makes the company look desperate, trying to draw a rating based on Punk, who was not even with the company. And apparently a lot of it had to do with Ariel Hawani being mad at Punk's appearance. Sorry, it had to do with Tony Khan being mad at Punk's appearance on the Ariel Hawani show. Footage shows Punk pie facing Perry and shoving him hard. Goes to grab a guillotine, but it's unclear if he actually grabbed it. Um, the footage was like, the actual action part of the footage was like four to six seconds long. Uh, it was broken up very fast with Samoa Joe, Chris Hero, and Jerry Lynn. Apparently... Later in the show, after the footage played, there was a CM Punk chant versus the Young Bucks versus Okada, or the Young Bucks Okada were beating down Pac. The CM Punk chant started. Why you would promote a guy? First of all, in all, in all honesty, in my opinion, nobody watching that is going to be like, oh, I'm never going to watch CM Punk again. It, it does nothing other other than to show that CM Punk is going to get you a bigger rating than any of your current stars can get. Uh, Dave Meltzer points out that far worse things than this have happened in wrestling dressing rooms. Lots of WWE incidents have been a lot worse. Nobody even got fired. Um, Meltzer doesn't think putting this whole incident back in the public eye for a ratings grab was a good idea. Uh, AEW has announced uh, the rest of their pay-per-view schedule for the year. I'm surprised they're not doing one in Toronto, considering that's one of their hottest cities. Uh, April 21st, St. Louis. May 25th, uh, Double or Nothing, Vegas. Forbidden Door, June 30th in Long Island. All in Wembley Stadium, August 25th. 
All Out Chicago, one week later, Wrestle Dream, October 12th in Tacoma, Full Gear, November 23rd in Newark, and then December 28th in Orlando. And Meltzer points out, and this is true, WWE can put counter programming on on some of those dates if they want to uh, hurt AEW pay-per-view sales one thing i think that's good that they're going to do is start allowing people to buy pay-per-view through youtube for people like me that are very um used to buying movies and stuff through youtube and don't have cable and don't want to sign up to to fight or trilla or whatever the hell it's called because it's too damn complicated for non-technical people like me i think the youtube idea is a good one Brian Danielson had a match in Arena Mexico versus 63 year old Blue Panther April 6. Over 15,000 fans attended, but it was not sold out. As far as Ring of Honor taping after collision, Tony Khan said, quote, It's a budgetary thing. It's a difference between hundreds of thousands of dollars annually, millions of dollars in tapings costs. When you're looking at budget, it's a good place to look. You know what a better deal would be? Get rid of Ring of Honor or just have it pay-per-views because everybody leaves. Okay, I would say about a thousand people left after the collision tapings in Ottawa because they don't know the Ring of Honor people and it's boring and the shows go so long that the people that stay for these five-hour shows leaves and, and, and are like, this is way too long. It's one of the reasons... Other than you advertising people like Chris Jericho in the center of posters of shows and then they're not on the shows and Mox Moxley's wrestling in Japan and CMLL and he's on the poster, but you're not even using him on the shows he's advertised for in AEW as well as others. But I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, like the Ring of Honor stuff is other than the hardcore of hardcore fans, it makes your taping less people want to go the next time. Because it just nobody wants to sit through a five hour show. It's it's just boring. And look at this for the collision taping this tomorrow, Battle of the Belts as well. Uh, in Kentucky, Highland Heights, Kentucky, only one thousand seven hundred and fifty nine tickets out. I mean, there's less and less people going to these tapings and they're so bloody long and nobody knows the Ring of Honor talent. Just throw in the towel of Ring of Honor or just have it as pay-per-view specials. Dynamite in Jacksonville, only 1,381 tickets on the 24th. Collision in Jacksonville, the 27th. This is your home base, 1,437. Dynamite in Winnipeg, the hometown of Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and Don Callis. Only 3,098 3, tickets out. Dynamite in Bakersfield, California. Granted, it's not till May 22nd. Only 1,290 tickets out. In other wrestling news, Mick Foley, who had been talking about doing one last match, apparently... He's been having concussion issues from just doing light wrestling in the ring. So he may be having second thoughts about coming back for a last match. Obviously, it's going to be all about the money. His last match was actually February 28, 2015 for Omega Pro Wrestling in Durham, North Carolina against Mikey, Mickey Gambino. Uh, he also wrestled a three-minute match for Juggalo Championship Wrestling in 2011. Uh, he also did a 2010 TNA match against Ric Flair. And I remember watching that TNA match and thinking, and I like both of these guys, and I really hope Mick will be all right because I got concussion issues myself, and they're not fun. But I remember watching this TNA match against Ric Flair, which I understand why Foley wants to do 
another retirement match because most people remember this TNA match against Ric Flair as his last match, and it was horrible. And it was in the impact zone, and you just felt bad. Like, why are these guys coming out of retirement to wrestle in this pretty much sound studio in this horrible match? Uh, Al Zink, former maritime promoter from 69 to 77 before Emile Dupree took back over, passed away. Uh, Roddy Piper, Rick Martel, Terry Gordy, and Harley Race had all wrestled for him and thought he was a good payoff guy. He also brought WCW to the Maritimes and some shows in Toronto from 89 to 93. And that would have been literally a handful of shows. I always wondered in 1991, in August of 1991, there was a sh there was a company that called themselves WCW that put on a show here in the Ottawa Civic Center. It had maybe two or three thousand fans. Rick Rude was there. Uh, Nikolai Volkov. Uh, Honky Tonk Man was on the card. King Kalua was on the card. For anyone that remembers him, the Angel of Death was on the card. So there was there was some WCW guys, but I wasn't like I remember buying tickets to that. Like, and I had to use my allowance. I was a kid, thinking it was going to be a WCW show, but it wasn't WCW. I always wondered what the heck that company was. DNA has a rebellion pay-per-view coming up in Las Vegas, only 453 tickets out. The next day, their TV taping in the same building, only 287 tickets out. How that company stays around, I honestly don't know. PFL Bellator for their April 19th show at the Wintrust Arena in Chicago. It's promoting buy two, get two free. So when Dana White says he's not worried about PFL at Bellator, you, you never see UFC do it, buy two tickets, get two free. They just put their ticket prices up more and more and more. And I've already talked about this. So I'm not going to talk about it too much more. But John Jones was arrested April 6th after an incident with Drug Free Sports International came to collect a urine sample and he took one of their phones at one point and made some threats, which is strange, but uh, I don't know if anything will come out of it. Just a poll bizarre. There's always more and more. <laughs> bizarre stuff with uh with john jones he's he said he only really wants to have one more fight against stipe miosic and other than conor mcgregor john jones who's way 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 less known than conor mcgregor and way less of a draw is like the second best draw ufc has but they don't need pay-per-view draws anymore with their espn deal and People, they, they're, they're like on a massive sellout streak on arenas just for people paying to see um, UFC, the brand. So, Mike says, if WWE forgoes Rock versus Roman for Rock versus Cody at next year's WrestleMania, I'm done. I think that um, it will be... Maybe Rock versus Cody at one of the Saudi Arabia pay-per-views. I don't know. It depends on The Rock's movie schedule, but Saudi Arabia would pay a huge amount. However, he would get way more publicity for waiting and doing it at, at a WrestleMania. But obviously, there's more heat for him versus Cody than doing him versus Roman further down the line. The Rock does own a lot of stock right now for WWE. And he can probably get more, and he clearly really enjoys wrestling, and it's been good for his career. It's helped get rid of a lot of negative publicity he's had recently. So I could see him being around for a while. Clearly, he's in amazing shape. 
Someone says we need CM Punk back in AEW. That will, again, I'll agree with Dave here. That is never happening. <laughs> never, never happening. At least not in the foreseeable future. <laughs> Maybe if WWE is is done with him years down the road and, and Tony Khan still wants to throw millions and millions of dollars at Punk, he might take it just because it's hard to turn down massive money. But But if you look at the numbers for AEW, overall... They're getting lower and lower and lower crowds, and these new sh- these new signees like God bless Mercedes Monet, but she never she wasn't a ratings mover, or really a ticket mover. Um, neither is Okada, or Will Osprey. So. Maybe the I mean, there's other people whose contracts are coming up. Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, that they could be made offers. They that they couldn't refuse Drew McIntyre too. But I'm sure WWE is also going to make them good offers. And who knows? Anything anything's possible. I do think if they brought Goldberg to AEW, it would uh, at least give them. Uh, if they brought Goldberg in, like WWE just brought The Rock in. And had him appear on a bunch of shows and then do a match. I think it. I think that would be the best thing AEW could do to to get them out of this this slump. Maybe have him finally have that match against Jericho that that started in in WCW but never happened. But other than that, like I, I, I there's not unless they were ever to sign Brock Lesnar, which I don't think WWE is going to let Lesnar go. There's not that many people that are known to mainstream fans that are going to regenerate interest in AEW. But I'm glad that I'm glad that they have an unlimited uh, amount of wealth to keep them around for a long time. Anyways, guys, have a great Friday. I'm heading off to the gym here soon. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to The Hannibal TV. We're also on Facebook at The Hannibal TV and Twitter at The Hannibal TV.